Yes. But we'll peel yes. back all of those different layers that make you who you are be based on geography and career-wise. So I want to begin. Thank you so much for taking a minute out today. And I want to begin our conversation with what we've all kind of lived through, a little emotional duress on the planet, surviving the last three and a half years of a pandemic. How did you get through it? And how did it change you? I was lucky. I cannot say I complained or I, we got COVID a few times, um, really bad the first time before the vaccinations and, and, but I wasn't afraid of it. I, I, I kind of refused to be afraid. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go down that route. And, and I suppose that's what I help people do. My, my motto is to don't believe those feelings. <laughs> um so yeah it was it was almost business as usual yeah. uh, for, for both my husband and i because sweden was very liberal when it came to all of the uh, restrictions yeah so we never closed down sweden never closed down so uh yeah, was I, it I, I was so grateful for that because the lockdown i don't know how i yeah handled that it but, was yeah. yeah so so was the mentality the prevailing mentality of the government herd immunity was that kind of the idea of not shutting down exactly yeah exactly. you know and and i think that that to me made the most sense because there was a couple other countries that did the exact same thing because at the end of the day personally for me just the way that the american ideal is which is all based on freedom that's the cornerstone of everything you ever hear about america and then all of a sudden, you know, there's not this choice right. to watch right. your business perish or to watch anything else. I know exactly. we had to stay safe. There was no clear answer. But at the end of the day, I kind of like that idea of herd immunity because I think about two years in when all the variants started coming out, Fauci had said after Omicron, basically everybody in this country is going to get it. Like, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, there's I mean, no way around it. Yeah. There isn't. Yeah, there isn't the, the only way I kept saying if the whole world closed down for four weeks. That would have saved us, maybe, or that that was the only way of any sort of a lockdown. Yeah, but this country being open, close uh, people traveling, there's just <laughs> it was, yeah, a bit silly, but yeah. Well, that's another yeah that, that that's a whole other thing so <laughs> i want to get to the heart and soul of what you do for a living you're an emotional relief expert but if i put you in front of a bunch of third graders it's career day and one of the kids looks up and says hey what do you do for a living how do you answer that child i help people get happy not the ha ha happy but yeah. the in your soul happy so when you're having a bad day uh, I help people not having such a bad day. I help people not feel so bad. Uh, you cannot avoid certain uh, pain in life. That that helps us grow. That helps us realize when it is good. But I help people not take difficulty seriously. Yeah. So... so how did we get to this point? Where were you born and raised? And how did you get to this point? Because it's not just the job, you're helping people and then you have yeah. to actually take care of yourself. So how did the seeds become who you are and evolve into who you are today? Oh, I was born in Poland, but I don't remember that. Uh, I was two and a half when I came to Sweden, my parents emigrated. And this was before all the difficulties. I mean, Poland went through some real hardship. Um, so, so dad was a bit antsy and that's why we, we came here, uh, and, and comparatively to, to a communist country, of course, Sweden was much, much freer and these things that we discussed. Um, but I've always been curious, I guess I took after dad and, uh, I've been following some sort of calling, not really knowing it, some sort of passion. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely following my intuition. And and now, <clears throat> many years later, <laughs> I'm realizing that that is what I need to teach. Don't believe your feelings, follow your intuition. Yeah, And that's what I've been doing. And of course, hardships and, and 
heartaches and um, difficulties like anyone else. I've gone through all of that. I have two children and a husband and a house and dog, cats. And yes, there's hardship, but don't take it seriously. And then things are so much lighter and easier and, and death and, and COVID. Don't take it seriously. Of course, some people that come to me are afraid of dying. Yeah. Not necessarily of the death part. Some people believe in heaven. and But some people actually are afraid of the dying, the process yeah. of disappearing. So, so even when it comes to that fear, it varies. So there are all kinds of issues that people get stuck on and yeah. take seriously. Um, and you don't need to. You don't really <laughs> need to. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. There are so many nicer ways of living life. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. I mean, it's your mind is your own uh, playground that can be wondrous or disastrous. And it's a yes. muscle. You know, that's the thing that I think it that's is. very key is that it's like your body. Like you just have to condition it to get to another place. Um, I remember that movie with Jim Carrey, Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Mind, and how he wanted to erase all of these memories of an ex-girlfriend mm. and how mm -hmm. he artificially did it and how it was bad to do it. And kind of mm. the parable was, you know, we just have to deal with it and move on. And I think that's mm. just kind of the way life is. I mean, it's kind of the evolutionary Darwinian notion, you know? I mean, you have to, you have to condition it. It's there's no magic pill. <sighs> We will die. We do have to pay taxes, most of yeah. us. There's yes. certain things in life. You might break a leg. Uh, a divorce might be better than what you're going through, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there is some pain, but, but the suffering, don't do it. Don't yeah. go there. Yeah. Don't go there. Yeah, and it's easier said than done because no one really talks like this. No one, I mean, that that third grader or or the kindergarten, the, the children are not taught this. Yeah, uh, we're all taught to take things so seriously. Oh, this is happening in your life. Oh, have to do something about it. Your grades, your career. Ooh, ah. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this: When you were in the third grade, what did you want to be when you grew up? Ooh. I didn't know back then. I liked painting. I liked crafts, yeah. uh, maybe some sort of crafty, artsy person. But mom figured that that was not a way of, of, of making a living. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know. I mean, college was, was like this big question mark for me. Yeah. So at one point, I got so frustrated. And I actually reached up and said, I wasn't very religious. Mom was. And I actually was missing that link. I also wanted to have this connection, but I really didn't. I went because mom said we needed to. Uh, but when I got desperate, not knowing what my life should, how I should continue, um, I reached up and, and I got an answer. Yeah. Except <laughs> it wasn't the answer I wanted because <laughs> there wasn't a college degree. Yeah in making people happy because yeah. that was the answer i was yeah. supposed to make people happy and the first thing that came to my mind was nurse and doctor and it, it, i felt that that wasn't it either so many moons later and art school and um different direction graphic designer but that notion of of wanting to do something meaningful yeah following me yeah. this is fun this is great i'm young yeah let's play around um a few burnouts later a few uh, discoveries maturing into being a parent and life um and then i just didn't have a choice i had to start investigating this this notion this intuition yeah. it comes from the inside it comes from the outside not from other people, not from, you really need to go inward. Yeah. And that is not all that fun. It's not exciting. It's not a career move. It's not necessarily, can be, of course. Uh, but it's not that sexy thing that is promoted out there. Yeah. But that's you know, where the answers are. 
That's the thing. And I think, like you said, the answer you got wasn't what you wanted. It reminded me, there's a show that's on HBO now, and there's this machine in a hardware store that mysteriously arrived, and it picks your destiny. When you go up to it, it gives it to you, and there's some people that are really happy, and there's other people that are like, oh, no. <laughs> but it kind of unfolds that way, and, and mm -hmm. you got to tap into those things that you're genuinely good at, and it sometimes it takes a long time to figure that out. Yes. And follow, believe that that is the better way. Yeah. Because we're being bombarded with all kinds of ways of being and all kinds of great routes and money. And, and now it's all this vlogging and all this becoming famous. And, and my children, um, when they were younger, they, they figured, uh, they, they told me, why do we need to go to school? I, I'm going to be a vlogger and make millions. Yes, that's right. <laughs> right? I know. So. And it, so that is what we're being taught when yeah. we look outward. Well, yeah. And that, that could be a whole other thing about how education kind of grooms us to hit standards versus really absorbing this quality of being alive and things that are important. It's yeah. Yeah. That's another aspect of, of, <laughs> yeah. of what is being taught. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is why some of yeah. these kids are like, why do I need this? But I don't yeah. think they're too young to understand that, under getting fundamentals leads to other things and makes you a more well-rounded individual exactly. that can handle exactly. the things that life will throw at you. So, exactly. so who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh, I have so many. I don't know why Joe Dispenza came up as, as the first name, but <laughs> I have so many people that I've been looking at and I don't, I never understood the point of having a best how can you have a best? How yeah. can you have one <laughs> when yeah. there's so many? I never understood that point of just sure. one yeah. when there are so many people. Um, and natural, healthy, um, uh, simple, th those are my guiding uh, notions more than a person. So, yeah. And then it changes all the time. I'm, I'm constantly finding a new hero, a new person. Uh, so I don't really have any. Okay. Uh, or, or I have many, <laughs> too that's, many. To, too many. Yeah, no, and that's good. So let me ask you this. Let's kind of whittle this down a little bit. If you could meet one person alive on the planet right now and spend a little bit of time with them, who would it be? Oh, Michelle Obama. Okay. She... Uh, um, she embodies so many things and uh, and yet she wrote a book and stands up for her vulnerability yeah my my latest niche or, or my well uh, direction is imposter syndrome and all these things where people can be doing amazing things and yet there's that hole Yet yeah. there's that something missing. So she she is such a great person to, as an example of how famous you can be. I mean, pretty much as, as far as you can get when it comes yeah. to fame and money and, and credibility. And, uh, and yet, it's not about that. Yeah. It's about the inside. Yeah. Well said. So what's your motivation every day to do the work that you do? You're actually helping enriching people's lives, helping them. You also have to take care of yourself. What gets you out of bed? What helps you help them and evolve yourself as a person? I've had to say no to a ton of things. And um, I've become even more of a recluse. <laughs> um, because I've burnt out so many times following my passion. Yeah. Uh, I've started all kinds of organizations and, and gatherings and, and I'm still being called to do that, but in a completely different way. So focusing is hugely important and saying no, not signing up for all those uh, parent uh, support groups and and um in my organization i i started uh, uh an eft tapping organization here in sweden it's just too much yeah. 
um, you have to, it's, it's, um, you have to know when to say no. And when you're excited and, and passionate, you want to do it all. And that's part of the difficulty. Now I help people with their sleep issues and it's hard to relax and sleep when you're full of beans and full of passion and full of um, success programming, you do need to calm down. Um, I live very rural and I can just step outside, get the peace, get the vitamin D, uh, just sit down, not have to interact, not have to be nice, not have to help anyone. Um, and that is very important when you're a helper that yeah. you find places where you don't have to be the helper. Yeah. So of all of the clients that you've helped, what's one of your favorite success stories that always puts a smile on your face? Oh. Well, the the one of the earlier ones that proved how amazing this is that I'm doing um, was this woman and she had she, she was so desperate to get rid of her pain her inner pain her anxiety her troubling thoughts that she was looking for a car and and a wall um she had been to all kinds of people uh, mostly the traditional helpers psychologists psychiatrists medication um but after uh, what are the details about this she was a mature woman when we met and she came to me to do this strange thing that I do. EFT tapping is still strange. Um, but she got helped in one session and she had been struggling for at least, uh, 30 years, let's say 25 to be, to be generous. So that wall in the car was going to end her pain. I mean, she was really uh, not doing well because she had tried to fix it and tried to fix it. And, um, so, so what I do is I, I help people go in to meet the feeling, to, 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 to say hello to the feeling as opposed to reject it. Uh, the feeling lives in the body. You need to uh, figure out what it wants. It's not there to to harm you. Yeah. It can be a bother. It can be a nuisance. Uh, you don't have to like it, but it has the answer in the question, in the pain. The pain um, will give you the answer as to how you can sort this. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> Again, the best, not my thing. So many. Or, um, or like one of the more memorable pieces that's kind of resonated with you. Um, well, lately it would have to be to, to look inward. And um, the fact that we, after my parents died, this woo woo world this um i wasn't very religious as i mentioned there is another side there is um a connection and i, I guess joe dispenza i'm supposed to talk to him and and he was an influence regarding these other dimensions and after my parents died i started hooking up to this whatever it is, this power. Um, and uh, so, so looking inward and at the same time, taking help from other sources, from higher energies, from these spheres, these, these um, woo woo um, areas. Yeah. So dreaming and envisioning and pretending and calling in, that's, that's the route. Spirituality yeah. is now being measured. John Hopkins and all these institutions, not all, but <laughs> they're, they're starting to look at 
how do we measure this? Yeah. And they're seeing that in this particular study, cancer patients are having a much better journey, uh, some remission, some, um, I don't want to go into exactly how this works, but spirituality can be measured now as a healer, as a physical healer. Yeah. So, um, yeah, more woo woo to the people. <laughs> That's it. Absolutely. Yes. So let me, let me ask you this. If you have a dream tonight and you run into the 20 year old version of you and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've led, the wisdom you've gained, what advice would you impart on that young version of you? Yeah, I would ask her to follow that calling quicker, <laughs> not be afraid of it, not, um, yeah dig her heels in because it is weird i mean i'm doing something weird already uh but i'm being called to do something weirder uh but luckily there's more and more evidence yeah so these these uh these energies can be measured uh, so the, um, i think an american team group got the nobel prize uh, last year no well yeah 2022 for me it measuring these energies that you can send an intention to another part of the world you can send an intention to yourself uh, dr tiller uh, found a, a formula for how in physicality our intention gets attached to molecules and disappear out into the spheres or inwards and of course, on a much simpler physicality and explanation, when we think positive thoughts, our hormone uh, picture, our hormone um, uh, outpour <laughs> changes, improves. Yeah. So it, it, it's kind of that, that pheromone simply, thing of attracting the opposite sex. It's really definitely a biological part that of that as we, well. Yeah. Exactly. That, that, that as well. There's so many. Yes, there are so many technical and physical measurables now Yeah, that that is the route forward. You know, yeah. I was listening to an interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and they were talking about kind of the coincidence of, say, running into somebody. Say I go to Sweden next week, and I run into somebody that I went to high school with from some small town outside of Kansas City. How weird and coincidental that would be. And he kind of dismissed it. There was a, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was weird how dismissive he was. But he's science based. Like all of it has to be empirically based. There can't be any, what, like, as you've said, woo woo going on. It has to be, this is measurable. But I think, like you were saying, we can, like, think about somebody and, They've thought about us, or there's some weird All thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, I yes. mean, but yes. science can't measure that. So someone like him or Einstein or Hawking or whoever, they're not going to say, well, yeah, that's that's concrete because it's not. I mean, but what you're saying with the advancement of science and measurables, it, it's happening now, which mm -hmm. seems to be something that's kind of extending that Darwinian notion of evolution. We're just graduating yeah. to a different point exactly you know yeah so of all of the things that you've done in your life so far what are you the proudest of the fact that i haven't given up <laughs> the fact that i'm still uh, following this uh, not always willingly and that's why i wish uh, in many ways that i could have sped it up and and, and listened to it and followed it but it is it is tricky because yeah. of all these things that you're um, taught on the, on the outside and in the, the real world, so to speak, that yeah. is supposedly measurable. Yeah. So so following your inner wisdom is uh, can also be lonely. And and I, I I was saying that I've become more of a recluse than ever. I've never been a group groupie of any kind. Yeah. Uh, but now. Um, it's it's even more important to to change my life in a certain way that and get new friends and more understanding and more support uh, from from new people new new groups maybe or um, 
Yeah. So okay. I'm all so, excited for 2024. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new beginning. So let me yeah. ask you this. Everyone out there has a perception of you. There's all these pockets of people. You got family, you got friends, you got your clients, but ultimately you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I'm a kind person. I want people to do well and be well. Uh, but I'm also impatient. I, I want things to happen uh, quickly. Uh, I don't want to wait, wait around. I don't want others to have to wait around. And that is a bit problematic because that is also not something that is believed in quick solutions, yeah. quick fixes. That That's a no-no. Um, I also enjoy um, contradiction. I also enjoy um, to uh, intrigue. I, I like to do something unexpected. So in one way, I don't want to follow my intuition that wants me to do strange things. And on the other hand, uh, I do enjoy it. Um, yeah. So, so because I guess I need to understand it even more. So I am enjoying it. And well, and this is how we are, us people. <laughs> We're yep. all confused and complex and, and amazing all at the same time. For sure. What do you like the best about living in Sweden? It's free and emotional freedom technique, that word free, freedom. Yeah. Uh, running my own business. Uh, there are issues I don't like about running my business, which is the promotion and the sales and the marketing. And I'm still working on those parts. Um, but uh, the freedom is, is amazing. Um, yeah. My husband is from, from Britain and, and uh, on our engagement trip, we were looking at each other saying, should we move here? Cause, cause he followed me. I lived in the States for many years. We came here and then we went to visit his family and, but it was so crowded. There were people everywhere. There was this long line. I mean, you had to wait for an hour to get, get into a public park to enjoy some fresh greenery. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, none of that here. Lots yeah. of freedom and space and it's amazing. That's great. So if anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Lissy Joy is my thing I'm called to do. Um, and I've experienced it myself. I've experienced with my connection, bliss, an amazing, amazing um, feeling of God's love for us or, or the, the universe's love. Uh, I've also experienced the power of this love. Am so po immensely powerful um, and I'm being called to, to make people happy so blissyjoy.com is, is my yeah my endeavor excellent Joanna thank you for your story thank you for your time and you. have a wonderful 2024 thank you you too Joe thank you